Number 42, letter A. What is the maximum torque on a 150 turn square loop of wire 18 centimeters on a side that carries a 50 amp current in a 1.6 tesla field? Okay. So um, anytime you start talking about torque and current and magnetic field and basically shapes and areas and the number of turns, you got to be using this formula. The torque on that current, current carrying loop of wire will equal the number of turns of the wire multiplied by the current flowing through the wire, multiplied by the area of the wire. You can think about it like cross-sectional area if you wanted, um, even though it's technically not. Uh, multiplied then by the magnetic field strength passing through the wire, multiplied by the sine of the angle between the magnetic field and the normal of the area. So what the heck is the normal of the area? Well, let's take a look. Pretend you have a figure. I'm going to try to do my best, but you know my artistic ability by now. It is certainly lacking. So pretend you're looking at this kind of square loop from the side. You're going to say it doesn't look like a square. I agree. So I know I need the values here in, uh, of the sides in terms of meters. Now they tell me centimeters, but I'm just going to do the conversion right to meters. Just move the decimal. Now, what's the normal to this square loop of wire? Well, what was the normal force, if you think back, right? Normal force, right? You had a particular surface, right? You had a box moving across, and you're like, oh, right, the... The normal force is the force pointing up, or aka perpendicular to the surface. So guess what? The normal is here. It is a an imaginary line, okay, that is perpendicular to the surface. So I'm going to try to draw that right at a little bit of an angle. Right, it's a perpendicular uh, uh, line segment, okay? So this right here, my friends, represents the normal. Okay, it's just called the normal. You can call it normal. It's not a normal force because it's, there's no force, but it's a normal line. You can call it, or they just call it a normal. So what's important now is the angle then of the magnetic field relative to the normal of that uh, surface area, so to speak, right? This is the surface of that loop. And if that were the surface, right, you can almost imagine if it were solid, it would. this would create a 90 degree angle in there, okay? So if I had my magnetic field lines pointing this way, like directly through the loop, What's then the angle between those lines and this normal? Right, well, it would be between that normal, it's zero, right? Because those magnetic field lines line up right on top of it. So if I plugged in zero into this, sine of zero is just zero, so this whole thing goes to zero, okay? So in order to then have a maximum, what I have to do is I basically have to take, let's say I'm gonna take this now magnetic field line and I have to rotate it, okay? I'm going to now rotate it so that it is perpendicular Okay, it's pointing now into the page as best as my articulate. You, know, you might say, well, it should be pointing this way, but, you know, based on my perspective of the drawing, it's pointing kind of, you know, into the page, so to speak. All right, this should be pointing into the page where it creates now a 90 degree angle, right? It's literally passing through the loop on the side. Okay, I'm trying to do the best I can there. The, maybe I should uh, point it like this or something, you know, so it's passing through the loop like this. And it's hard to imagine because you might be looking at it and you might be saying, well, that doesn't look 90 degrees to me, but, you know, trying to draw a three-dimensional representation on two-dimensional paper, uh, not my strength, not my strength. So, in any case, and you would think, right, you would think after like 10 plus years of doing this, I'd be able to, yeah, yeah, well, sometimes practice doesn't make perfect. Sometimes uh, practice makes permanent, and if you're uh, practicing incorrectly, well, you create permanent bad habits or bad skills. So practice properly. Anyway, a lot of alliterations in there. So um, in any case, this would be like one representation of the field. The field could have also been pointing in the other way too, right? But it should be at 90 degrees because 90 degrees, when you plug in sine of 90, this is one, so that's at a maximum. So here, just plug in now the values, okay? So the number of turns is 150. The current there is going to be 50, as they told us. The area... It's a square, so it's 0.18. You need that in meters, square it. The magnetic field strength is 1.6 Tesla. And then this would be the sine of the 90, okay? Plug that all into the calculator, and what do you get? So you get 150, 150 times 50 times 0.18 squared times 1.6 sine, times sine of 90. And this works out to be about 389, I guess, considering the units, and torque is in Newton meters. So that's then the value, okay? That's letter A. 
Let's take a look at letter B. What is the torque when the angle now is at 10.9 degrees? So basically what's happening here is if I had to, you know, kind of rotate one of these lines, the torque here is now going to be changing because the magnetic field is now changing. It's rotated. And now this will create about a 10 degree angle right in here, all right, with now that normal. So what happens then is that this value changes. It's the same calculation. Just plug in 10.9. And when you do that, it's basically going to be times sine of 90. Oh, excuse me, times sine of 10.9. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So this then works out to be, when you do this math all over again, it should work out to be about 73.5. So 73.5 newtons. So what you notice, you change the direction of the magnetic field relative to the normal. You change then the torque. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe if you can. That would be awesome. And look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.